Good evening, everybody. Uh, good evening. It's great to see you all here. Uh, we're coming to you live on Facebook with our friends uh, at Congregation Bethel in Missouri City, Sugarland, uh, and today we're going to discuss way number 24. As we know, tonight, later tonight, we'll count that, but last night we counted the 23rd day of the Omer. And the 24th way to maximizing pleasure in life is to believe in the wise man. Uh, it's in Hebrew, Be'emunat Chachamim. And that is because we value wisdom. We value wisdom. There's no greater uh, uh, commodity in Judaism than wisdom. Uh, King Solomon says that if you desire wisdom like money and buried treasures, then you will find it. You have to search relentlessly for wisdom, and then you'll actually you'll actually arrive at it. But if you if you uh, if a person is not interested in wisdom, then it won't it won't you know if a person doesn't seek it, if a person doesn't run after that wisdom, then you won't you won't you won't you won't get it. You know there there is. We have an uninterrupted, we have the power of a direct and uninterrupted transmission from Moshe at Mount Sinai. 3,300 years ago, the Jewish people stood at the foot of Mount, of, foot of Mount Sinai. And we were, we were there. Every single one of us were there, or our souls were there. And we had a direct transmission. That direct transmission has been uninterrupted, for 3,300 years. And the Torah that we learn here today has been taught from rabbi to student, rabbi to student, all the way to us sitting here in Missouri City, Texas. Uh, and and that's, that's because we have a direct link. But if, if I were to start telling you things, and I give sources to the things that I teach, but if I were to just come here and start spewing nonsense, not bringing any sources to any of the things that I'm saying, because just my own uh, conjecture, my own conclusions, my own thoughts, my own whims, that's a very, very dangerous thing. And if, if you're truly seeking wisdom, you'd say, one second, what's the source for that? What's the, it means we have to believe in wisdom, but we have to verify that wisdom to ensure that it's coming from a proper source. source right? It's very easy for me to get on a blog and start writing whatever I want to write, or you know, uh, producing emails and sending it out to the community. It's it's a it's you can send that about anything you want, but if you want to be serious in Judaism, and serious about wisdom, you verify the sources. Where, what's this based on? And it's not it's not an it's not a uh, it's not a, a inappropriate question for someone to verify a source. Right? Where where, where does it say that? Right? And that way you can have faith in knowing that you're not just being sold a bill of goods. Right? Uh, I know I've heard many, many, many times over the years people saying different things about, about Judaism and what it does not represent um, based on their own personal, uh, you know, their own personal wishes of what they wished it was. For example, some people would say that... Uh, that, oh, Judaism is all about a pick and choose Judaism, pick and choose. The, the truth is, is that Judaism is not a pick and choose religion, right? What we need to understand about Judaism, Judaism is not a zero-sum game. It's not a, it's not, every person comes from a different place. Every person is re their responsibility is to arrive at their destination. Now, if one person grew up in a religious home, one person grew up in a non-religious home, one person grew up in a kosher home, another person grew up in a non-kosher home, one person grew up in a Shomer Shabbos home, the other person grew up in a non-Shomer Shabbos home. Well, God wants everybody, each one of those people, to take throughout their lifetime as many steps as they can possibly take. That's what God wants. God doesn't want anyone to look like the other one. Oh, I want you to be observant like that person. I want you to act like this one. No. Every person has their own 
their own uh, maximization of their life that they need. The only way to do that is if we take it seriously and we pursue that wisdom and we pursue the knowledge of Torah and the actions of Torah. And it's not, and we don't base it on just our own emotions. Well, today I'm in a mood of keeping kosher, so I keep kosher. Well, if I'm committed to something and I know that it's the right thing and I understand its source, and I, right? So it doesn't make a difference if I'm interested or not interested, right? We don't obey the law because we feel like obeying the law. We obey the law because that's the right thing to do, whether we're in the mood or not in the mood. Right? We don't say, you know, today I'm not in the mood, so I'll kill people. I'm just not in the mood. Right? It's not, it's not the way it works. Uh, today I'm in the mood of keeping kosher, so I'll keep kosher. If I'm not in the mood, then I'll just find another excuse of why not to. Um, so the, it's, it's very important that when we have wisdom uh, and we, we, we want to uh, be truthful to ourselves, to the Almighty, to our responsibility on planet Earth, is that we verify that wisdom and ensure that it is indeed sourced and that is authentic and that we're not being sold a bill of goods. Anybody can make up things. But to have the truth, that's what the Torah is. The Torah is truth. Right? It says, Torah emet natan. La'amoel. Right? God gave us a true Torah. A Torah which from every side you slice it up, it's still true. Okay? So with that, we're going to sign off to our friends on, uh, from our friends on, on Facebook. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, it's great to see you all here. Uh, and uh, we hope to be sharing with you more videos in the near future. Hopefully way number 25 is tomorrow. Have a lovely evening, everybody.